All wise eternal God, we first want to pause and say thank you. Thank you for permitting all of us to see this day that you've made. For this is the day that you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In spite of calamities that may have overtaken so many of us, we're still going to lift our hands and say thank you. That in spite of the darkness, we do know that what you showed us in the light is still visible in the darkness. Help all of us to understand that. That in this life we shall have tribulations, but your word says be of good cheer, for you have overcome the world. So by that, you made us overcomers as well. So we pray tonight for your blessings upon this class, uh, that we would get something out of it that we can utilize in our everyday lives. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Let's get right into this tonight. Who are you? We've been dealing with this for a few weeks now. Um, the Most High won't let me turn loose from this because it's very important to know who are you. So write that down. I'm about to show you something. Write down who are you. In the first letters of each one of those words, what do you get? You got it. Way. Way. Here's, here's the thing that the Most High showed me from that. It's impossible to know your way when you don't know who are you. It's impossible to know who is the way when you don't know who are you. Who is the way that I'm referencing to? Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. There's only one way. That's Jesus. So when we dive into this tonight, who are you? I want to go back to the beginning. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. I want to show you something. Uh, I've been burning all day to dive into this word with you guys. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I want to show you some things. Due to brevity, I, I can't go as deep as I want to, uh, so I'm going to challenge you to do your due diligence on the text as well, but there are some things I'm going to pull out of this in the Hebrew, the original language, and I want to share with you tonight. Who are you? Genesis chapter 2 Looking at verse number 7. Verse number 7. Let's go back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. It said, Then the Lord, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust. That's important. Underline dust in your Bibles or write it down. Of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living, scripture says, soul. That's important, soul. So write down three. We are three components. So we are triune ourselves. How is that? We are spirit, soul, and body. Or some say body, soul, spirit. Write that down. We are body, soul, spirit. So when you look at this text, he said he formed man from the dust. So prior to even breathing the ruah, the breath of life into man, he was only a body, just a body. Then he took the second step and blew into him life. Notice the scripture says he became a living The spirit is so important. Now, let's go over to Genesis chapter 3. I want to show you something in Genesis chapter 3. Remember, dust is important. I'm about to show you something. Here we go. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God has made. I, I, I have so many... So many flags popping off in my head when I study this scripture and even in the original language. And, and I'm getting ready to show you something. I'm going to mess you up for a second. Mess some of you up. Some of you are very wise and know this text. I can't assume that everybody on here are novice in the scriptures. But I want to show you something tonight that's going to flip a lot of people's theology. Watch this. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God made. 
first of all, who made the serpent? God made the serpent, right? So he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Here's where it comes into play at. Notice Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. God made man from the dust, right? Then he blew into him the breath of life, the ruah. Then he became a living soul. Prior, watch this. So when he put him in the garden, here's where it comes. Do you not think that when God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden, they were not aware of the serpent being there? Uh-oh. Notice the text say, now the serpent was crafty. He was very wise. So you think this was the first time that they met him? Ooh, pastor, you, you intriguing me. That's what I want to do. I want to scratch your brains and awaken you for a second. Now here, notice God created the serpent, right? The serpent was in the garden where God placed man and woman there. So watch this. Listen to this now. He said, you, did, did God really tell you this? Here's what a word that I want you to write down. Here's, here's where the Hebrew comes into place. I want you to write down this word. N-A-C-H-A-S-H. That's N-A-C-H-A-S-H. And the Hebrew brother had to give me the correct pronunciation of the word. It's Nahash. Nahash. Yeah, I see y'all laughing at me. Nahash. That's the correct pronunciation of the word. Pastor, why in the world would you give us this Hebrew word in a text like this? Watch this. I, I, I've been waiting for a platform to teach this, and the most I say tonight is the night. Nowhere, I repeat, nowhere in the original text language is the serpent referred to as the devil. Uh-oh, I just flipped somebody theology. Watch this. Now the, put the Hebrew word there, Nahash. What's the Nahash? Here we go. I love that you asked that question. The devil is not even, let, let's, let's go a little deeper past. Let's step out the three feet and jump into the eight a little bit. Those are titles for him. Devil, liar. So the devil, the liar, he was crafty. He was able, you ready, to utilize the serpent to speak to Eve. Whoa, 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 whoa Pastor Nettles, what are you really? Yes, don't take pastor's word. Do your own due diligence and study the Hebrew text itself. That's what, when you write down the word serpent, Nahash, that's what it means. So Satan is nowhere in the original language, period. But he used the serpent. He used the serpent. He jumped into the serpent. He used the serpent mouthpiece to beguile Eve. Are y'all with me? So watch this. Let's drop down and get a little deeper. We're going to get a little deeper. Now watch this. Remember I told you in 2 and 7 to underline dust. We were a living soul. So first we were a body. Second he blew into us a soul. Stay with me. So let's drop down. Let's go all the way down to verse number 14. Let's, let's start at 13. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this you've done? I'm in the NIV. The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So, so now she got to put the blame on somebody, right? So watch this. So the Lord said to the serpent, here we go. Notice the Lord didn't talk to the devil. He talked to the Nahash. He talked to the, the serpent whom the devil was using to beguile Eve. Watch what he says. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this. Oh, here we go. Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly. Watch this. And you will eat. Dust all the days of your life. I think somebody just caught this text. You just caught it. Two and seven showed us he made us from what? The dust, right? He made us from the dust. 
Then when you jump over to Genesis chapter 3, now the serpent comes into place and the serpent beguiles Eve, tricks her with his craftiness. Oh man, y'all riding with me. Is not the devil crafty? Is not he the kind of person that can get into anybody and use anybody to deceive us? Oh, pastor, let, let's go a little deeper. Let's jump out. He said, if it were so, oh, pastor, don't go there with us. If it were so, he said he would even deceive, you got it, the very elect, if it were so. So that shows you that the serpent was not Satan per se, but Satan utilized the serpent to do his work. That's why the Most High, if you search through all kinds of genealogy, search through history, the serpent was once an upright creature. Whoa, Pastor Nettles, you teaching us that? Yes. All right? Look at the text. The text sh clearly shows you that, that he had to have been upright walking if the Most High said, I'm going to curse you and now put you on your belly. Whoa. So obviously it was first an upright creature, an upright livestock, an upright serpent. But because of what he did, this is where I'm about to mess you up. Here we go. He said, I'm going to curse you and place you on your belly. And now what, what the text says, you will eat dust. Woo! There it is. The dust. What is he going to eat? He's going to feed from us. Oh, this is where we go deeper. We coming out. We're in the eight. We about to go in the 10 feet. Here we go. So who does the devil use to come at us? You can touch yourself today. He used other people. He eats. Remember, he eats from the dust. He feeds off of us. We assist the enemy in doing his work. Watch this. When we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to reside in us. Uh-oh. See, that's why the two can't be in the same body. Choose ye this day whom you going to serve. Now, the book of Revelation said you're either going to be hot or cold. He said you can't be lukewarm. He said because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out. Dust. I think I got some listeners on here. Watch this. Dust. So he, he's going to eat the dust all the days. Notice what the text say. Your life. As long as you're living, the enemy has a job. Here's his job. He only does three things. Only does three things. Only does three things. I want you to catch this. He only does three things. Who are we? We're comprised of three. Body, soul, spirit. He only does three things. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You are catching this tonight. You are catching the theology. He only does three things. Steal, kill, destroy. He does not change those three. The enemy is extremely consistent. That's one of the mechanisms that is causing to destroy the body of Christ. His consistency. Here it goes. I'm pointing to me. We are the ones who are inconsistent. We are inconsistent in our prayer life. We are inconsistent in our, in our giving. We're inconsistent in our time. We're inconsistent in our prayer life. We're inconsistent in our worship. But the enemy never changes. This is why he is so crafty, so good. Here it is. You better get this. This is why he can use anybody. Who? Anybody. Did you hear what I said? He can even use us preachers. He does not care. He does not discriminate. He can use me. He does not care. Why? Because he's crafty. Y'all ride with Pastor tonight. I'm feeling this thing. He eats from us. He uses others. He can get inside of anybody else to feed from us. Remember, we are dust. Let's go back, Pastor, again. When we die, we go back to the what? Oh, y'all with me tonight to the dust from whence we came from. Yes. Good job, guys. So when we go back to the dust, here it is again. And I'm about to jump over to my immediate text. We, our flesh, that's important. Your flesh is food for the enemy. Notice what I said was food for the enemy. Your flesh. Woo. Let's go deeper, Pastor. When God blew into us, the Ruah, we became a living soul. I hope your hands are sanitized. Touch this noggin of yours. Soul, your mind. 
This is where it gets deep. I'm going deep again before we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You can go there as I'm talking. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Listen to this. Let's go a little deep tonight. Your soul. The place that the enemy desires to have the most is your soul. We as believers have a job to win souls. This is where we go, Pastor. It's the job of the preacher. It's the job of believers to transform the paradigm. That's a word. Give it to your young people. The paradigm. There has to be a paradigm shift, meaning your mind has got to change. This is where we're about to go tonight. Listen to this. When your paradigm stays the same, when your paradigm stays the same, you can take a person out of something and they still exemplify what they came out of. Why? Their paradigm didn't change. Their mindset this did not change. In order for us to live the life that the Most High is wanting us to live, your mindset must change. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, go there with me. Verse 19 and 20, we talked about this last week. This is, this is our foundational text. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the who? Holy Spirit, let me give you another Greek word. Write down parakletos. Parakletos, you've heard that before. Para means alongside, right? Para, alongside, side, right? Parakletos, I'm going to come back to that. He said, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who is in, point to yourself, you, whom you have received from God? Paul is giving a question here, and I'm going to come back and give a foundation to this, why he was talking this talk to the Corinthians church. He said, you're not your own. You don't belong to yourself. He said, you were bought at a price. The price was paid for us. What? Jesus Christ shedding his blood for us, hung on the cross, shedding his blood for us. That's how the price was paid for us. He took on the penalty of sin. He said, you were bought with a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Here we go. Get ready. Holy Spirit dwells in us. We were body, soul. Now when we receive Christ as our personal Savior, He dwells in us. Here it goes. Let's go deeper, Pastor. We are the temple, right? So as being the temple, I'm going to take my glasses off for you to see this. As being the temple of the Most High, this is why it's critical when you know who are you, remember, who are you, first three letters in each one of those words comes out to be way, right? It's critical that you understand who are you by guarding your portals. Yes, guarding your portals. What are my portals, Pastor? Your eyes are portals. Your ears are portals. Yes, the Most High gave them to us as natural senses, but they're spiritual senses as well. Check this out. This is why you must be mindful of what you watch on a consistent basis. <laughs> this is why you must be mindful of what you listen to on a consistent basis. Are y'all ready for this? Whatever you listen to the most, it's not a might. It's a matter of when it's going to come out. I've been guilty. Anybody who know me know pastor got a flip mouth and I'm getting better at it. I promise you, I done repented so many times. God, help me with this mouth of mine, please. And he's doing that. I, 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 I have said some flip things in my mouthpiece. I, I, was, I had allowed myself to watch a show and it got in my portals and I end up saying some stuff that the person was saying. It goes to show you, and my wife brought that to my attention. You wouldn't have said that word if you hadn't have been watching this person say this and that. It goes to show you that whatever you are putting in your portals, you will eventually speak. Oh, man, Pastor, what, can you go text with us? I, I can. 
from out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth eventually is going to speak. So let's go here. here. Here comes another note taker that you need to write down about the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit resides in us, I don't know about any of you. Some of you might be a little more uh, out there than I am. I've never heard the, the voice of the Most High audibly. Some of you may have. This is going to mess up your theology tonight. So, Pastor Nettles, when you say, I hear you, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? I'm glad you asked. This is how the Most High communicates with us. When we have the Spirit, now let's go to Scriptures. Try the Spirit, see is it of God. This is how the Most High communicates with us. His Spirit speaks to our Spirit. There is a connection. Then the Spirit relays it to your mind, your soul. Then your soul speaks what the Most High told you to say. Yes, that's how he communicates with us. I ain't going to never tell nobody I just heard the voice of the Lord say, uh-oh, what the world? I might be losing my mind then. I ain't never heard it. Maybe y'all have. But how I do hear him is he speaks to my spirit man. And my spirit man leaps and rejoices. So the communication factor goes, he don't speak to my body, flesh. He speaks to my spirit man. Watch this. My spirit man relays it in my soul and my soul articulates what needs to be said. Did y'all get that? That's the spirit. So the Holy Spirit, remember, remember the most high? Remember when Jesus came, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but I'm going to leave you a comforter. That's the Holy Spirit, the paracletus. He's a comforter. He steps in. He fills in the gaps. He enables you to do the things that you need to do. It's not by your own will that you do nothing. Who will is it, Pastor? The Spirit enables you to do all things. Prove it to me, Pastor. I'm glad you asked me to prove it to you. The book says in Philippians chapter 4, I can, you can finish it, do all things through who? You said it, Christ, who strengthens me. Watch this. Let's go a little deeper into the text. Here, Paul was having a conversation with the Corinthian church. And I always like to use a little comedy here. The Corinthian church was so bad, he had to write two letters to them. Lord, how much he had to write to them two times because they just weren't getting at Jesus. But he wrote to them in effort to reverse some bad teaching. Oh, pastor, let's go. Because you got to understand something about this church. They was using a particular phrase to make it seem right. What was the phrase, Pastor Nettles? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Drop down to verse number 12. <clears throat> I don't have the rona. I, my, my throat is dry. That's laughter, y'all. Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 12. Look what the text says. He said, I have the right to do anything you say. But not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. Now, this is the word that I really want to get to you tonight. The Message Bible jumped out at me. In my studies, I do a lot of different translations, including the original language. But the message just slapped me in my face. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 in the Message Bible, it reads as thus. Just because something is technically legal, can't you picture Paul saying this? Just because something is technically legal doesn't mean that it is spiritually approved approved, or appropriate. Can't you picture Paul telling the church that? You around here talking about, it's beneficial. I can do it. All things are beneficial. All things are legal. All things are the law. We use excuses. But Paul came back and said, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Just because something is technically legal, I need you to ride with Pastor. The message made it very clear. Just because something is technically legal, he say, does not mean it's spiritually appropriate. You fill in the dot, 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 dots. We are the temple of the Most High. What was Paul addressing here in this text? I battled with this today. I said, God, I need you to help me teach this. And this is what he shared with me. The Corinthian church, and you can go back and study it in your own time. The Corinthian church was struggling with sexual immorality. Whoa. Yeah, they were trying to make their fornication be justified. Where, well, I it's legal, all things are legal, so I can do it. Paul said, hold up, no, it ain't. 
Just because it's legal, just because you get the urge, don't mean you have to do it. That's why you have to guard these things here. Your portals, you have to guard them. You have to be careful what you're watching. You have to be careful what you're listening to because the enemy is crafty. Remember, he feeds from the very dust to which we were made of. He feeds off of us. So by feeding off of us, sometimes the enemy get hungry. And in his hunger, he utilizes, remember the book say, hey, remember the book say, hey, he's the prince of the you got it, the air, so he utilizes those things to tempt God's people. And if we are careful, we'll find ourselves falling into the same traps over and over and over and over again. And remember, if you don't know your weakness, he does. Who are you? Remember, who are you?